Okay. I'm going to just cut to the chase here, get started. I see that uh, I am live and a few people are joining in. Greetings, everyone. Uh, we are going to be making uh, a Kumihimo bracelet. I know I did a class or a demo, I should say, in March of this year uh, of Kumihimo. And uh, this time around, we're just going to add a stripe to it um, and make it a little bit festive with some holiday colors. Um, I had some people that got kits, so uh, hopefully you can follow along as best you can. Um, I doubt very much if uh, you will be able to finish the project while I'm doing the demo, but I've made it so um, you will be able to see all the steps and you can work on it at your own pace after this demo is over. So it will be in the replays. And speaking of replays, I had a bad experience this week of finding out that a few of my saved demo videos had been deleted. I did not delete them, at least not knowingly. I don't know why I would do that. <laughs> I want them to be in the archives for everyone to share, but um, I was horrified when I saw that, and there was no way that I could get those back. I, I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was a Facebook thing or not, but I sort of suspect it because yesterday, in fact, um, I received a notice in my notifications that a certain video in October was going to be deleted um, shortly by Facebook and I had to go into the settings and say that I did not want that deleted. So that is something very strange to me. So I um, downloaded all of the demos that were still available on an external hard drive so this could never happen again. However, um, I don't know exactly how to uh, go about making sure that uh, you can access them, but I was thinking that perhaps I would um, download them to YouTube. So in that situation, you should still be able to access them whenever you want. But it will require a little bit of work on my part to get it, um, to get them there. But I think that that's the most secure place for them to be because I would hate for all of those to be lost. That's over a year's worth of demos, uh, and I don't want them going down the tubes. So. Uh, if you know something that I don't know about Facebook and how they manage their stuff, please share it with me. But, you know, I looked in the settings and I really couldn't see anything um, to indicate, you know, that they would delete them after a, a, at a certain amount of time. But that's what's so strange is I haven't gotten notices from, like, the videos from a year ago, the notice I got was from last month that they were going to delete one. So I thought that was very odd. So, um, oh, let me see here. Hang on there. So yeah, uh, I, I don't know, but I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that we don't lose everything because not everybody can do the projects when I present them and it's nice to have them in the reserves, you know, for when you do want to view them or if you want to view them. So, okay. Um, so to hello to all you guys. I kind of just jumped right in. I was watching some of my older videos and I kind of hem and haw at the beginning and it's like, let's get down to business. But I do want to say hi to all you guys. So um, I see that we have a nice group of people watching. And, oh, you like my turkey pin, Gina? <laughs> yeah, I went with this one. You know, I put that on on the group page. Uh, I was so torn. I, I Not torn, but, 
you know, I was conflicted on, on the look of the pin. And um, I decided the verdigris is nice, but that wasn't really how I wanted it to turn out. So I'm more satisfied with this one. You're funny, Suni, to, to do all of those videos over again. I don't think so. But I, I was really disappointed um, that Nancy Harrington's um, dot painting video got trashed. And um, that's very disappointing to me. So um, maybe someday in the future she'll do another one uh, similar. And um, so we'll have that one on file as well. So, okay. Yeah, I remember Francesca having some problem and I don't know, I guess I should message her and ask her um, if she was able to resolve that in an easy enough way. I know she was pretty panic stricken when it happened, but I don't know exactly how that all worked out. So, okay. So I can see that I'm being pixelated again. I don't get that either. All right. Anyway, some of you have done Kumihimo and are here to do like a refresher thing with it, which is great. Uh, and others have not done this at all. Um, hey, Monica. Yeah, my, my handouts should all be secure. Um, they should, yeah, they are because they're also in my Word documents. So should anything ever happen to the ones that are on Facebook, I do have uh, files for those in my uh, Word program. So yeah, that that's excellent to uh, to point that out. So yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> You're here for the sound of my voice. That's pretty funny, Deb. I think my voice is kind of weird, but you know, oh well. But I'm glad you like it. All right, so let me turn the camera down here. And, um, you know, I did do the uh, homework demo last week, and I forgot to mention that you will need glue for this project. Um, and, but you don't need that for the e till the end. So what I use is sort of like a super glue. Uh, this is called Zap, Z-A-P. It's a gel. And it basically it is like a super glue, but in the gel form, it's nice because it doesn't run all over the place. Uh, you still can get plenty messy with it, but um, it pretty much stays where you put it. Uh, and it doesn't turn that milky white like some um, some of the uh, super glues do. Okay, so that's something that you will need before you can totally finish your project. All right, now I'll demonstrate that as we go. But this was the, uh, this is the project. This is a holiday, what I call a holiday Kumihimo bracelet. And it's got the three colors with uh, a silver stripe going uh, throughout it. And some of the people that bought kits chose some different colors, which is uh, fine, but they should all have this one common stripe uh, going through the bracelet. So I know not everybody likes the holiday colors and, and that's fine. Uh, you can make it whatever colors you like. The, uh, the other one that I'm working on today that I'm going to finish off for you is, uh, in, in blue and silver. And, uh, you'll be able to see that how I finish it. Okay. This, the clasps are nice and strong. These are, we had a little bit of a discussion about these clasps a few days ago, or maybe last week, I don't know. Um, and this is a real nice, strong magnetic clasp. It's called a mag lock, M-A-G-L-O-C, mag lock clasp. They're probably the strongest magnet clasp I've ever run across. So um, those are included in the kits, whoever got those. Um, I do have some available if people need them. 
And then I've got these little silver plate. They're silver plate, by the way, and also little silver plate end caps that we're using on that. All right. So if you got a kit, you should have all your beads already strung so that we can get right to setting up the, uh, the Kumihimo disc. And there's a few things I want to tell you. For those of you who are not familiar with the Kumihimo disc, um, it has all these numbers on here, which when you look at it, uh, it, it looks confusing. At least it did to me, because I thought if I had to um, do things strictly by numbers like that, I probably would get it all knotted up and in a wad, and I would never finish it. So luckily... You don't have to um, pay attention to any of those numbers after you first set up your board. All right. Oh, good, Marie, you made it. Yeah, they are good class, and Deb, you have a good point. Uh, if you have a pacemaker, you can't use these. Nothing magnetic. Okay, so that just from a health perspective, uh, if you have a pacemaker, opt for a different clasp, okay? Thank you, Deb, for the public service announcement, sweetie. Okay, so what I do when, when I first get a disc or when I teach a class is I try to... Um, make it as simple as possible to have success with this thing. And the first thing you'll notice is it has four black dots on here. And we're going to pay attention to those as we put our strings on. But after that point, you don't really have to pay attention to the dots or the numbers. Okay. So what I do, and I'll show you as I go along, is we... We turn the disc, we rotate the disc a quarter turn after every movement. So I put arrows on mine in the way that I'm going to turn, um, just as a reminder. Let me just set it up, and then that would, um, that's probably the best way to go. That way you'll understand it without me babbling. Oh, Jennifer says, or a deep brain stimulator. Okay, I, I'm not even aware of that, but yeah. If you have health issues like that, magnets are not a good thing. All right, so I've got my four strings already loaded. And I did mention having a jar or vase, some kind of tallish uh, open typed vessel that you can set your disc on <clears throat> with all your strings if you have to leave it. So that way you don't get your cords all tangled up. All right, so let's see here. Get my... Trying to keep these cords from out, from not getting tangled uh, is a project all unto itself. All right. So the demo one I'm doing is the red, green, and silver in which I have two strands of silver. I strung two, two of the cords in silver and one cord in red and one cord in green. So when you first string, strung, string the beads or when you added your eight inches of beads or whatever you put on there, um, you know, it's all this is hard to show on a tiny little phone camera. But when you've strung your beads, this is this is what you have. You've got your length of beads here. This is, I think I put like eight inches on here. It doesn't matter if I put more than I actually need on here. It's better to have more than, than not enough. But I've got the four cords that I loaded all these beads on. And then I'm going to take the beads and kind of 
uh, take it in half and then put my cord like this. I've kind of got my cord doubled and I'm going to lay my first cord. You see where these black discs are or black dots are. I'm going to place my first string between 24 and 25. That's on one side of the black dot. And then between seven and eight on the opposite end. So it's just going across wise like that. All right. And now I'm going to take my red cord and I've separated those in two. And I'm going to put that on the opposite side. I'm going to place that between 23 and 24 and between eight and nine. So I have two cords on either side of that black dot. Okay, so that's your red and green cords. And then I'm going to straighten out, I guess my cords aren't exactly the same length. I didn't cut them all evenly. All right, so I've got a red and a green on those two. And then I've got my two silver ones. Well, it's one cord, but you double it over, so then it becomes two cords. So on this one, this is one of my silver cords now. This is going to be the stripe. Uh, I'm going to place that between 16 and 17 and between 31 and 32. That's on the one side of the black dot on this side. And I'm going to take the other silver cord and put that between 15 and 16 and 1 and 32. So I have two cords this way and two cords this way. Okay, so so this so then you want to try to even out so you have as much cord on one side as the other, okay? And unfortunately, like I said before, I cut my strings at different lengths because I wasn't using. Evidently, I wasn't using a um, yardstick, and I was just eyeballing what, what I thought 40 inches was going to be. So don't be like me. <laughs> but as long as you have enough, you know, as they're relatively close in the, the length, that's all that really matters. You just don't want one of your cords up here and then other ones lower. You want them all to be pretty much the same length. Okay. All right. So I have those four chords have now become eight chords because we doubled them over. If at any time you have questions with this, please uh, just put a comment in there and I will try to uh, clarify. All right. So, and Deb, you said you put yours over a bracelet mandrel. mandrel? That's a very good idea. I just have an empty peanut butter jar here, but I have used a vase or whatever, and I just set it on top of that uh, just to kind of help keep the cords from uh, tangling. All right, so then the next thing we need to do is attach our one of our head pins, and I'm going to use a round nose plier to just make a hook. Nothing fancy. And I'm just going to make it like an S, like an S hook. Okay, nothing fancy. One's going to hang, the weight's going to hang on one end, and the cords are going to be connected to the other end. 
Okay. So this is important here. To attach this cord, I mean this uh, hook to my cords, I'm going to insert it. I hope you can see this. I'm going to insert it in this area right here. Right here. Okay. So let me wiggle that in there. Put that in that corner, and then I'm going to go diagonally to the other corner and catch all four cords. Well, all eight cords with the hook. Okay. And you might want to close that hook a little bit. Uh, and I just am doing that with my finger. Then on the other end, I'm going to suspend my weight on that end underneath. Okay, so my hook has grabbed all eight cords in the center and my weight is below it on the, the lower hook. Okay. All right. I'm trying to figure out the best camera angle. This is going to be tricky. Just bear with me here, guys. Because you don't need to see me. You need to see what I'm doing. All right. Periodically, you will need to pull your cords a little bit because you want to keep that um, the connection, well, I guess the center, you want to keep the center of the cords in the center of that hole all the time. Pull the board towards me like that. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with number 32 away from me, okay? I'm looking at it. It's away from me. It's in front of me. That's just a starting point. You could start at one of the other black dots. This is just how, how I'm starting off. So I guess I'm going to have to uh, make sure you guys all can see me. I'm going to see the movements on here. I'm going to take my cord from the lower left, which is the cord between 16 and 17. If you set up your board like I did, I'm going to pull that cord out and bring it up and place it between 30 and 31. And just push it in the little slot there. This is a foam board and these little slots are cut relatively tightly and they should, you want them to stay kind of tight. Uh, a lot of times if you're using the Kumihimo board to uh, do leather or yarn or other heavier cords, sometimes these little spaces loosen up and then when you do a thinner cord, it, uh, it doesn't stay seated as well, okay? Okay, so now I have, looking forward, for, you know, for myself, I have three cords up at the top of my disc and just the one on the bottom and the two on the sides. That's how it should be. So I went from lower left to top left. Now I'm going to take my cord that's between 32 and 1, pull that up, and bring it down between 14 and 15. Now I'm going to do a quarter turn. And that's why I put my arrows along here to remind me that I'm going in this direction. If you go in the other direction, that's fine, but you have to stay consistent to the direction that you are turning. And that's why, you know, putting this visual on here, um, is helpful to me. 
I also wrote on my board that, you know, on the small, I mean, I wrote it very small, but I wrote bottom left to top left and then top right to bottom right quarter turn, just as a reminder of what I'm doing. Okay. So now I had put that cord between 24 and 25. No, I'm sorry. Between I put that cord down be, between 23 and 24. Now I'm going to grab, it gets easier, believe me. Now I'm going to grab the lower left, which is between 24 and 25, and I'm going to pull it up and go between 6 and 7. Basically, all I'm doing is working next to those dots. The numbers aren't important. I'm just saying them right now so that you can orient yourself with the movement that we're making. So I've got three strings on top. And now I'm going to move between 8 and 9 and take it down between 22, 23 and do a quarter turn. Now I'm going to take the lower left string and go up to the upper left string string or upper left side of the board and what we're doing here is forming a little nub let me see here we're forming a little nub on the the base of the cords before I introduce the first bead Okay, so if you have to leave your your work, if you get interrupted from something, always make sure that you leave three chords at the top. So that way you know you, where you are when you have to come back. If you leave it just, you know, two, two, and two, and two, you don't know wh where your next move is. And that's important when you're adding beads, because if you don't, Add your beads and and do the uh, the revolution uh, properly. You're going to have a space uh, in your bracelet where the bead should have gone and you missed it. So it'll become clearer as you start to uh, to do the movements. When you have your uh, a little bit of a nub. Not really a nub, but you can just see that those cords are, are getting woven a little bit at the end. You don't want to make that too long. If you pass, if you do about three or four cycles around of going, you know, bottom left to top left, top right to bottom right, quarter turn, and so on, you know, like three or four times, that's enough. You don't want too much length of that, um, the nub end of your cord because it has to um, it has to fit underneath the, the little end cap and if you have too much cord length it's gonna not fit right oh Deb you remembered that <laughs> yeah I said in the in the I always say it even if your house is on fire make sure that you've got the <laughs> these three cords up at the top before you place your your board down it's that important. <laughs> okay, so I've got a little bit of a nub end here, so I want to start putting my beads on. So I'm going to start putting my beads on. First of all, let me tell you, I'm sitting the way I'm sitting because I'm trying to show you what I'm doing. But if you're working on your project, you really should be sitting back in your chair and let your strings hang down. Let your strings hang down between your <laughs> legs. And that way you can um, maneuver everything without your cords getting all messed up. Okay, so whatever chair you're sitting in, it's best if you can sit kind of straddled, you know, and have this down in the center, okay? But I don't know if you can see very well if I do that. So I'm going to, let me move this here a little bit. Hopefully I won't drop you out of the holder. 
So yeah, it's not ladylike, Jennifer. <laughs> of course, most of the stuff I do is not ladylike anyway. So, so there you go. All right. So I'm going to start to introduce my beads and I'm taking the third string from the top, which would be this string on my right on the top and pull it out of the, um, if your cords get a little bit tangled, just shake them out a little bit and uh, it will loosen them up. I'm going to take one bead and I'm going to bring it, let it go all the way down and go under the string that's over here on this side. It needs to pop underneath that, that string. And now I'm going to take a bead from the lower left Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Forget what I said. I want to fix this a little bit. I need to make the nub a little bit bigger. I can see that it doesn't want to lay properly. I need to go around this just a little bit more. Nothing like getting off to a bad start. Okay, make sure that you keep your cords in the center, in the center of that hole. All right, so now I'm going to take the bead. Make sure that only one, that you only have one, and let it go down. And it's actually going to go under this cord. And... Then I'm going to take one bead from the bottom cord and well, why didn't that work? Sorry, I'm having technical difficulties. You know, sometimes I can't chew or walk and chew gum at the same time. Let me, let me start this over. Okay, because Renee, I only use the plastic bobbins when I'm doing like a necklace uh, where I'm going to have uh, a, a lot of length uh, and your cords would get tangled up. I'm sorry, guys but I'm on the wrong track here because like I said, sometimes this is what I tell my students when I teach a class, when you're doing this, you really shouldn't be talking to your neighbor or doing anything else that could possibly throw you off uh, your, your movements. And that's exactly what's happened here is um, I'm talking and not paying good enough attention. So, because I haven't gotten that far, I can take it apart without difficulty, okay? And that's something you, you should know anyway, how to correct any potential problems. Yeah, it is hard when you don't focus. That's, that's and I, you know, I get distracted very easily. So I'm just going to reset these up. It's no big loss. Let's see, I dropped one on the floor. So I'm going to set my cords up on either side of the black dots. I 
Actually, the video that I did in March is probably much better than this one is going to be, if you want to refer to that one, too. I think I was a little bit calmer. I'm not sure. I don't really feel uncalm, but uh, I don't like when I screw up, because then that throws everything off for me. Excuse me. I'm going to grab this. All right. All right. Okay, so I've got all my strings back on. I'm going to put the string through the corner and grab all the strings on a diagonal and attach my weight. Okay. All right. So let me just get back to where I should be. I'm just kind of building a little nub. Seriously, when you know what you're doing um, and you have all your beads strung and your board ready to go, you should be able to make um, a completed bracelet in about an hour's time. Okay. All right. So I've got my little nub created and I'm going to take that first bead from the upper right string and place it down and it should stay underneath the cord that it's next to. Now I'm going to take the bottom left, pop a bead under there, and bring my cord up here. And quarter turn. Bead from the lower left to the upper left. Take my upper right cord, add one bead. Make sure that it sits underneath. There's a quarter turn there. quarter turn. So you add a bead from the lower left to the upper left, upper right, add a bead, and go to the lower left, or I'm sorry, lower right, quarter turn. Add a bead, Make sure it goes underneath that cord that's next to it. Upper right. Pop that bead down in there. Here. Quarter turn. Can you guys see okay? Because if I need to move the uh, phone or myself, I will do that. I'll let you see. Unfortunately, I don't have like the capability of letting you see up really up close, but that's the beginning 
of it where I say that bead pops underneath. It needs to be underneath the adjacent cords so that they stay in place. I don't have any bobbins on here, Suni. I, I just have, uh, for a bracelet, I don't feel like I need the bobbins. And actually, you know, I don't have weighted bob bobbins, so I don't really know how those would work. Probably, um, I, I, I can't really say because I don't have those. I, I don't know. But you do need the, the weight in the center for the tension of the bracelet to be right. Okay, so I'm back on the upper right. So I stopped while I was talking. I put the cords on the upper, uh, the three on the top. Okay, so I'm going to take one bead, make sure that you just get one, and that it goes down under the adjacent thread. And quarter turn. Add a bead that it goes under the adjacent thread. Add a bead, quarter turn, and we just keep doing that. You get um, sort of a rhythm to it once you understand what you're doing, the, the movements that you're supposed to be doing and it goes relatively quickly I find this to be a very um, Zen type of project you can kind of um, get into a nice calm state when you're doing this Provided that you're, you know, paying attention, this is a difficult thing to do, uh, like I said before, when you're talking to someone, having a conversation, or trying to watch TV. I mean, you can do this uh, and watch TV, but you really have to pay attention to your moves. Because once you skip a bead, you can't fill that space again. You will have a hole basically in your project and you can't sew a bead in you can't glue a bead in um, it's just not going to be uh, right there's no way you can correct that unless you figure out how to backtrack uh, and you know take your your beads off to that point uh, I have never successfully been able to do that, but I do know people that can. Um, my brain just doesn't work that way, so if I have a mistake, I usually just tear it apart and start over again. And that way, and then I pay better attention. And that way, um, you have a, B, uh, a bracelet without any flaws in it. Now, I've done them, you know, in the beginning, I thought, oh, that's just too much work to rip it out. I'm just going to leave it with the bead missing. And then I was never happy with it. So, um, you know, I would take it apart afterwards. But it's easier if you do that, you know, keep an eye on your work as you're going to make sure that um, that you haven't missed anything. But it helps a lot if you mark your your disc uh, with those little things that I mentioned. Lower left to upper left, upper right to lower right, quarter turn.
And then I want to check my progress, so I'm going to make sure that I have my three cords up at the top, and then I'm going to look underneath to see what's coming out. There's not a lot there yet, but there will be. Yeah, if you have kitties, uh, <laughs> I would say do this in a room where they're not uh, going to be batting at the strings because they, they sure will. Um, Suni, I cut them, I think I cut them at 40 inches, but I think I cut a couple of them. I think I did a couple of them at 40 and a couple of them at 36, but they should all be the same. They really should, but um, I guess I just wasn't paying attention. But, you know, you could certainly get by with 36. If you have a small wrist, uh, you could certainly do 36 and save a little bit of cord because when we're done with the project, you still will have a good piece of um, cord left on all of your strings um, and some extra beads. But it's better to have too much than too little. That, that could be a problem. All right, I'll do a few more rounds. And yeah, any other questions or if you want me to repeat something, I'd be happy to, uh, to answer that. It does look um, really uh, challenging at first, I think, to most people who haven't experienced it because they see all those numbers and they think, well, you know, I'll never remember the pattern or the sequence. Um, but really, once you get started, you don't have to pay attention to those numbers anymore. It's just the repeated movements, uh, again, of the lower left to upper left, upper right to lower right, quarter turn. You kind of can make that like a little mantra. Uh, and just keep that in your in your brain. Also, um, I pretty much always use size eight beads for a bracelet. You can use size elevens, which are smaller. It will make a daintier bracelet, uh, but still very doable. Um, I have made uh, necklaces with both um, size 8 and size 11, and there I would use um, the bobbins because there's so much more length. If you are going to make a, like a, say, a 22-inch necklace, you would need 22 inches of beads on all of your strands, okay? Your cords will have to be a lot longer, and off the top of my head, I can't think of what those would be, but, you know, you make, you put on as many beads as the length of the necklace that you want. So you're gonna have gobs of cord, and that's why the bobbins are very necessary for that, because the cords would be all over the floor and get tangled up really badly, so, the bobbins help and then you just unwind the cord as the bobbins start getting you know shorter and shorter and then you just unwind more of the of the cord again but um, size 11 makes a very pretty pretty necklace um, size 6 I have uh, tried and I don't care for the um, the look of that I find that the sixes don't nest quite as well together as the eights do or the elevens maybe i did something wrong i don't know but i don't care for these done with a size six seed bead and the other thing to note is don't use beads from craft stores for for these you need to have japanese um I, I don't even, well, Czech would be okay. They're, they're making the Czech beads a lot better these days, but 
Um, I have found that tubes of seed beads that you find in craft stores are generally not very uniform. Um, some of them will be a little larger or they might be, uh, the shape isn't completely round. It's, it's, it's hard to describe, but if you've ever used those kinds of beads, you, you'll know what I'm talking about. They just don't nest well in a project like this. So go for the, the Japanese, either Mayuki or Toho. Those are both really good brands, and um, and then you'll be happy with your the outcome of your project. Now, I believe the ones that um, that I did on the project in March, I believe I used check beads on that. But like I said, they have um, they have become better. The generally the seed beads that you buy like on a hank. On a long string a lot of times those are uneven so usually the tubes uh, you know are, are the ones to go by yes they are very inconsistent hi Suzanne okay all right so that's you know and keep it centered like I had mentioned before, if your cords in the middle kind of go to one side, you know, just just pull them a little bit, just give them a little nudge, so that way that th your work is in the very center of that hole. Okay, and see it's coming along. See how it's growing. All right. So I'm not going to um, do the whole length with you because I think that it would be incredibly boring unless you find something you want me to talk about um, as I'm doing this. But, um, but I did another one earlier that uh, is right to the point where it needs to be completed. And then that way you'll be able to see how to end your bracelet. Because with these kinds of demos and stuff, it's not like being in a classroom where I can walk around you guys and see exactly what you're doing. If you're, if you're doing something wrong, you know, um, I can correct that or, you know, help you to understand the sequence of it a little bit better. Um, but, um, you know, doing this the way I'm doing it, it's very difficult uh, to really impart what um, what needs to be done. So I don't know if you can see this any better or if it'll be fuzzy. But you can see how the strings, hopefully you can see how the strings are, um, or the beads are tucked into the strings. So nothing is loose and popping around. They're all secured by the cord that's around them. If you see a bead that's kind of flopping around, it's not in the right place. They all need to be secured. And notice I stopped with my three cords again at the top. So now that I know, now I know where to pick up again. So back up at the top, right? Sometimes two will want to two seed beads will want to come down, but you've got to make sure that you just capture one. Can I talk about sizing again? You mean the size of the seed beads? or um, the size of the strings. Technically, 
technically, if you know, if you say you have a seven inch wrist, you should add seven inches of beads to, I was told 40 inches a cord, no matter what, however, however many inches of beads you are adding, just to make sure you had enough cord. But I thought it was a little bit wasteful. So, you know, I kind of changed it myself to 36 and found that that was plenty you can do whatever you like. But the amount of beads, if your wrist is seven inches, you put seven inches of beads. If you have an eight, eight inch wrist, you put eight inches of beads, nine inch and so on, okay? Or five inches, whatever. Well, I don't know how many, in, I don't know how many beads, I've never counted the beads, but I'll measure, you know, I'll measure the, the, the strand you know, after I put so many on, I'll just get a ruler out and see how long that is. And I stop when it's the length that I need it to be. But I've actually never really counted out how many beads that is. And I suppose it would be different. Well, of course, it, it would be different depending on if you were doing size 8s or size uh, 11s. So it just matters how long, um, the, how long of a strand of beads you have. And Deb, I haven't decided what I'm doing about Thanksgiving yet. I I generally have Thanksgiving at my house every year. Uh, of course, last year we didn't do anything, um, which felt very weird because I've been doing Thanksgiving for 40 years. Um, and uh, I'm pretty sure I'll be doing it again this year. But the family, see how two want to sneak down there? Um, the family's quite small anymore, so... Um, it's not really a big deal if I do it or not. But more than likely, I will do it. I do love Thanksgiving Day dinner. That's, that's a day of feasting or overindulging, I guess, would be more like it. But I like all those... Um, Thanksgiving Day foods, you know, that that I don't normally make throughout the year. But I think, at least in my family, the older we're getting, the lazier, uh, <laughs> the lazier we're becoming. It's a lot of work. Um, the string I am using is called Tough Cord. It comes in a roll like this. I know it's backwards. It's put out by Eurotool. Uh, this is size number three in white. Um, I generally use white for uh, most of the beads or most of the bracelets I will use. Occasionally I will use a darker cord, uh, say if I'm doing all black or if I'm doing a color lined seed bead, I'm I might use um, a color cord that's, you know, coordinated for that. It comes in a bunch of different colors. But honestly, once you get all those beads on there, you don't really even see the cord. So, uh, like I said, unless it's a color lined, you know, like a see-through kind of a, of a bead, the color of the cord really doesn't matter. So... White is a good one, and size number three. It comes in lots of different um, sizes, and that's like the thickness, thinnest to thickest. And see that little spiral's coming out real nice, okay? Oh, I would love to come to your house for Thanksgiving dinner, Sumi. <laughs> I love to eat it. I don't like to to cook it necessarily. Okay. Yeah, and the leftovers are wonderful. The, the, we can get several. You know, I, I stop at about three days. I don't want to eat leftovers more than that. That's, um, that's enough. Uh, some people are very diehard, you know, turkey eaters and fans or whatever. But uh, if I've had three days of leftovers, I'm done. All 
All right. So I'm, I think, I hope that you understand um, the, uh, the pattern that I'm doing, that you understand that the bead has to be secured under the adjacent string so it doesn't move around. And you do that repetition of bottom to top, top to bottom, quarter turn. All right, so I'm going to stop there with this one. But you can see that it's got a nice spiral pattern with the seed beads. On the handout, there's also, um, on the last page, there is a diagram of um, different color patterns. You see, this is where I'm going to put my piece in here. If the taller the jar, the better. Or, like Deb said, her her uh, bracelet mandrel. That's a great idea because it's got the hole in the top that the weight can kind of just sit down into and your strings can just hang loose and not get tangled. So I'm going to set that one aside and I'll finish that later. And then I'm going to take this one that is ready to be um, finished. Now I'm going to look at comments here again. Yes, Renee, it's eight inches of beads, and then when you double over your cord, you're sending four inches on one side and four inches on the other. So you have four inches hanging down on all your cords. Okay. Jennifer, you guys had turkey already? Turkey's good anytime, really. It doesn't have to be saved just for Thanksgiving. Make waffles with the leftover stuffing, cover with meat and gravy. Oh, wow. That sounds cool. Like, I need any more bad habits. Thank you very much, Sharon. <laughs> okay, let's see here. All right, so I've got... This is the one that I did in the blue. It's like an aqua blue with pearl white and uh, the silver. So that's kind of a real pretty combination too. And this is the length. Uh, I measure it from time to time. Uh, I can just take one of these tape measures. And I measure how many inches of beads. I have, and remember you have to allow for your clasp and closure. So I have, I have about six, eh, about six and a half inches of beads on this, of just beads on this cord. And that probably will give me about a seven and a half inch bracelet. On here which is fine so you have to make sure that uh, you check your length from time to time because you can get carried away and just keep going you know you, you still see that you have beads on your cords and you just keep going but um, unless you want to make an anklet out of it <laughs> it's gonna be too big for your wrist yeah Don um, what I wrote on my disc is I have, well, this is, this is my original disc from eons ago. I've got, on this one, a, a message here to leave three strands at the top when you have to leave your board. So always leave with three strands if your work isn't finished. Then I also have lower left to upper left written and then upper right to lower right, and then quarter turn. And then I drew, drew my arrows, well, on this one. Goodbye with my peanut butter jar. On this one, I put my arrows all the way around to remind me to turn that quarter turn. 
All right, let's see here. Yeah, see, the, the Facebook thing is pixelating really badly, so you can't really see what I've got on there. But you know what I could do later is just take a picture of my disk, uh, although it's really kind of messy, but um, maybe you can get uh, the idea. But I just write with a ballpoint pen on it. It takes it real, it, it uh, works real well. All right, so I'm at the point now where I want to finish this up. And I have added as many bees as I want on here. But I need to add my second head pin on here because this is going to be what connects the, uh, the end cap on here. So what I'll do is I place the head pin on the board and then I still am going to do my same movements all the way around and incorporate or I should say uh, catch the the head pin or wire into the uh, into the strand of threads okay so I'm gonna move this around and do yeah I need to make my quarter turn and I'm just going to do all my movements and that encaptures my Pin. You may have to move that pin around a little bit just to make sure that it stays in place. And I'm just doing the same movement, lower left to upper left, upper right to lower right. And catching that pin in there. And I only want to do that maybe three times around the board. Otherwise you get this big long stem and um, it doesn't fit nicely in the bead cap. All right, so that's going to be it. I've got that well inside those threads. It's kind of like woven into the threads. So now I'm going to take these off. I'm going to take these two strands and these two strands and I'm going to tie a knot, tie them in a knot and then I'm going to take the other two strands off and at this point, I can take the weight off. And proceed to catch everything in the cords. <laughs> um, okay, so now I'm going to tie these two in a knot. Pull tightly. So I have all these cords that I need to cut off. All right, so I've got my head pin is stuck inside and all of these cords need to be cut off, but I'm going to glue the knots I think what I'll do is I'm going to disconnect these cords right here. And just snip that off so I don't have all that stuff to deal with. All right, so I've just got a little piece of cardboard or whatever to uh, lay my piece down, and then I'm going to add that glue over the string to make sure that the knot does not separate 
come apart. Really make sure that you catch it all. All right, let that dry. It doesn't take all that long. Um, I think, I think these head pins are 22 gauge. But I think you could probably use 20 if that's what you have. Um, you probably could. All right, so now this end that doesn't need the glue, it's got the pin connected to it. I'm going to straighten this out a little bit. And I'm going to cut off the little head of the head pin. And then I'm going to let's see here. What I want to do is make a little wire wrapped loop. And it doesn't have to be pretty because it's going to be underneath the, um, the cap. But I just kind of twisted that over a bit. And then I'm just going to wrap this short wire around the long wire a couple of times. And then cut off any excess, any pokey parts, and then get my bead cap or end cap. And kind of make sure that that's seated all the way down. Okay. And then I'm going to grab my, if you wanted to, just for the heck of it, you could put a seed bead on the top of that little bead cap, just as a little extra decoration there. And then I'm going to take my round nose pliers and make my loop. But before I close my loop, I have to add my magnet or whatever else you would use. Where is it? It's probably stuck to something. <laughs> I had it here. Oh dear. Always something. Then I'll have to grab another one. Hang on a sec. Get my little box of tricks here. Oh, I hate when this happens. Oh, it's stuck to the other magnet. That's why. Jeez. Okay. All right. It's stuck to the other magnet. That's why. All right. So now I'm going to insert 
this is the, the probably the hardest part of the whole thing is getting this darn thing in here to not stick to anything else while you're trying to attach it. So I'm just threading on that half of the bead cap and grab onto my loop with my round nose pliers and then take my chain nose pliers and wrap usually about three times around but uh, you pretty much want to uh, uh, go until you hit not hit but meet up with the bead or the end cap so that there isn't any play in it and see you can't really even see the kind of cord that I used without really looking hard to find it but that's that's on there and I think that little bead looks cute on there at the end it's not necessary but I think it looks cute All right, so this end probably could dry a little bit longer, but I am going to take my chances with it. So I am going to cut off the rest of this excess cord. Don't cut your pin, and don't cut so close that you cut into the knot. Now I'm all tacky from the glue. All right. Where's my round nose now? Oh, duh. Okay. And that's what I was saying about not making the, the tail end of this too long because it won't fit under the um, under that end cap very well. Okay, so make sure that's all stuffed under there. There's a lot of different kinds of end caps that you can buy. Um, I used to have some favorite cones, but I don't think they're being made anymore. Um, but I did find these on Etsy, and I'm pretty satisfied with them. my other half And it sticks to all the tools. And there you go. This color is really pretty, too. Perfect. Ta da! That's perfect. <laughs> so, 
that's how you do it. And if you need to replay, replay all you want uh, and go over the steps. I'm, I am not happy with the way this, um, my uh, demonstration went very well. Um, but actually, you know, you can watch the one from March if you want to see it again. But it's, you know, sometimes it's difficult to, uh, at least for me, to get all my thoughts in the right place. And when you really need to concentrate on something, um, sometimes it's difficult when you uh, get distracted as easily as I get distracted. So that's my excuse. So then you'll have some extra beads on your strings that you can just put back in your little baggies or whatever or tubes or whatever you have um, generally a tube one full tube of uh, eight o seed beads will make two bracelets in in one color you know if you were just doing a one color so um you could generally get two bracelets out of one package or you know split them up into different colors so that's it. I really like this color. It's kind of fancy looking. But, you know, not everybody is a red and green person for the holidays. And um, it's nice to have something else that's a little bit sparkly. And on the dressy side, I would say. So, yeah, you know, that's, that's it. Um, next week... I'm, I'm pretty positive I'm going to be doing uh, the decals on enamels for, um, well, let me see. Let me pull my tray over here. I've got this in the way. Um, I've got a lot of junk on here. Clear that off a little bit. This is kind of a mess, and I apologize for showing it as a mess. But um, that's how I work. So I'm going to show different ways to um, enamel on, well, not different ways to enamel on, but different choices that you can use decals for. Uh, and also like some holiday type um, decals. And maybe some florals, the color decals, I guess, is what I want to is what I want to say. So um, I will give resources and all that stuff, you know, for the places that I got my decals. Um, but this is pretty much what I want to do next week. So I'll be using I'll be using decals. These are just the black and white decals. Uh, and then I'm going to add some little um, floral wafers to some of them just to kind of uh, give them a little bit of color. Some things have come out well, some didn't, but that's all how working with this stuff goes. You know, you get some, you get some successes and you get some failures and, um, you, you, and you learn from it. So, um, you know, these are kind of fun. So we'll be working on that next week. Um, and then after that, I'm, I'm not really sure what we're doing. So, you know, like I've said before, if you have, uh, suggestions, if it's something that I can do, uh, I'd be happy to, to, uh, go through it with you and see what we can come up with. Those are the two. Uh, if you need more supplies, I have some supplies left for this stuff not a lot but some um and i'm going to be putting the handout out in a few minutes for um you know the the, the pic pictorial types of uh you know the handout the normal thing and so you can look that over and uh replay if you need to and if you make these, I'd like you to post them and see what uh, what you come up with and what you think of the whole process. So, anyway, 
I guess that's that's all I've got for you guys today. So, uh, like I said, I'll get the handout out, and I'm going to, I guess what I'm going to have to do with these demos now is download them all to uh, to my hard drive. So if there's, if you happen upon uh, in the files and you can't access one of the, the videos, let me know, because, you know, Facebook, it's doing its thing. Uh, let me know. That's how I found out about the dot painting. Someone asked where they could find it, and I said, "Well, it's in the in the video archive." And then I went and looked, and it's like it's not there. So anyway, I'll still be I'll be working on transferring them over to YouTube, so you have another uh, place to access them if something tanks with YouTube, I guess. Because I'd hate for these to all get lost. Um, after the amount of work that goes into them. So, all right, guys, I'll see you in the group. Uh, post your stuff. And thanks for watching. I always enjoy when you guys are here with me. So, take care. Bye bye.